Um, I'm delighted to be here tonight. My name is Helen Zoki. I'm the Commissioner for Equal Opportunity and Human Rights in Victoria. And it's a great honour um, for me to be part of this One Just World Forum, uh, which has been convened specifically to commemorate International Women's Day. And this is the 25th anniversary of the International Women's Development Agency as well. So this is quite a momentous event. Um, yes, <laughs> we should thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rob. I missed my cue card there. Um, One Just World is a national series of public forums sponsored by AusAid in partnership with the International Women's Development Agency and World Vision Australia. And uh, these organisations are joined by a university partner in each city, and here it's the University of Melbourne. So uh, thank you to all of the partner organisations as well. So we're delighted that you could be part of this special event tonight, how women can change the world and how men can help. May I begin the formal proceedings by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the people of the Kulin Nation, and to pay my respects to their um, ancestors past and present. Um, and thank you for Kavisha for um, commemorating that song to Ruby Hunter. And um, I was um, saddened and pleased to see that Archie Roach performed at the um, Port Ferry Folk Festival, and that must have been uh, an amazing effort for him after Ruby's death. So we'll all remember her fondly. Um, One Just World is about providing a platform for ideas and conversations about important development and is issues and how these might be addressed to enable you to talk directly with those involved in development, to make your own suggestions and find out more about ways in which you can contribute and get involved. This evening we are celebrating the role women play in helping their families and communities in the developing world escape poverty. Of the billion people living on less than US $1 a day, three out of five are women and girls. Just imagine the transformation that would follow if we could break through the barriers that keep so many women in poverty and without rights. We know that when women benefit from development and have a say, they share the benefits with their families and invest in their communities. Women use their earnings for the health and education of children and themselves. And for every year beyond fourth grade that girls attend school, wages rise 20%, child deaths drop 10%, and family size drops 20%. Yet even with this knowledge, mobilising the resources to enable women and girls to change their lives remains hard work. International Women's Day 2010 comes at an important time. There are five years to go until 2015 and an enormous amount that is still yet to be done to reach the UN Millennium Development Goal of gender equality and empowering women. And around the world, countries are assessing what has been achieved in the 15 years since the UN World Conference of Women in Beijing in 1995. Where are things at when justice and self-interest both argue for investing in women and when women's leadership makes such a difference, why is change so slow? And what can we do to speed things up? This evening we have two special guests to answer these questions, Hilary Charlesworth and Jane Sloan. And I'd like to begin by introducing Hilary Charlesworth. Um, Hilary would be known to many of you as an internationally renowned thinker and commentator on international law and human rights with a strong interest in gender. Hilary is Director of the Centre for International Governance and Justice and Professor of International Law and Human Rights at the Australian National University. She is an Australian Research Council Federation Fellow and has held visiting appointments at Washington and Lee School of Law as Manley O. Hudson Visiting Professor of International Law at Harvard Law School, New York University Global Law School and as Wayne Morse Professor at the University of Oregon and at the University of Paris. And I bet you she's squirming with this long introduction, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> but let me finish. Um, and she was the winner with Christine Chinkin of the Gola T. Butcher Medal awarded by the American Society of International Law in 2006 for outstanding contributions to the development of international human rights law. Please welcome Hilary Charlesworth.
Many thanks, Helen, for that kind introduction. I'm just glad my parents are here to hear that. Uh, they're probably the only ones who really appreciate it. Uh, I want to begin and join Helen in acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people. It's wonderful to be here tonight back in my hometown of Melbourne and to be part of this wonderful celebration and to help mark not only International Women's Day but 25 years of the International Women's Development Agency, which is a wonderful institution of which I think Australia can be extremely proud. Uh, I must say it's, it's a bit daunting to follow the beautiful singing. Uh, thank you so much for that. And I know we're going to have another wonderful choir and we had the women's uh, circus too. And my little 10-year-old niece who helped my sister drop me off got very excited when she thought I was going to appear as part of the women's circus. And uh, when she heard it was just me talking, she decided not to come along. But uh, in, in celebrating International Women's Day, of course, we're marking, what's exciting about it, we're marking it here in Melbourne, but we know that we're part of a truly global festival. So there have been events across the world of, of all types. For example, I was checking this on the website today, a poetry reading in Baghdad, sports carnivals in Tanzania, a high tea in Jamaica, a rally in Bangladesh, and a rural women's gathering in South India. This year actually marks the 99th birthday of the first celebration of International Women's Day. It was proposed 100 years ago exactly, but not put into place until the year later, by a German politician, Clara Zetkin, and she wanted to have this day to give a platform to press for women's equality. Well, the idea caught on very, very quickly as a way of campaigning for peace, uh, for women's voting rights, and for better lives for women and girls. And today it's become a celebration of women's solidarity across borders. Despite many boundaries and differences in language, religion, culture and wealth, women share many similar life experiences and concerns. But today is not just a celebration. International Women's Day also is a chance to remind us that we shouldn't become complacent, that there are many areas in which women haven't yet achieved true equality with men. And a quick snapshot of women's lives around the world, and I took these from the latest figures from the UN Development Program, shows us just some of these problems. Helen's already mentioned some of them, but we know from the figures today that 100 years after the first International Women's Day, women still earn less than men for the same work in all countries and find it much harder to gain access to credit and business opportunities. Women face discrimination at all levels. The average of women in parliaments across the world is just 18.8%, an extraordinarily low number 100 years after the first International Women's Day. And women, we know, suffer violence at epidemic levels across the world, particularly within the home.